Hi guys, this is Wilder Prof, also known as Magic Rockinger in real life. Uh, this uh, has been a very special year and I really needed a break. Um, and uh, so this year I decided to actually hike what is known as the Stevenson Trail. Um, in French, this is Le Chemin de Stevenson. And uh, I would like, uh, with a couple of videos, a uh, gearless document, then this year's adventure. So I'm going to have a little introduction. In this introduction, I'm going to tell you why I made these videos. I will tell you why I think the Stevenson is a very special trail. Um, I will tell you a little bit about the geography, where the Stevenson Trail is actually located. I would like to give you also some acknowledgements uh, uh, for people that I have met on the trail and um, in general, for those who have provided information concerning the trail. There are also other acknowledgements I would like to make because, as I said, it has been a very special year. And uh, so by being able to watch other YouTubers' contributions, um, I, uh, I felt much better than I would have otherwise. Then I'm going to go on and give you the first elements concerning the Stevenson Trail and then describe to you how I'm going to package the different stages uh, during the uh, 10 days uh, that uh, I took uh, to take the Stevenson Trail, and I will tell you then how each of these stages is going to be organized. So the purpose of, of these videos, first of all, it is to have a personal record. Of course, I hope you're going to like them, and uh, if you don't like them, just uh, skip um, and uh, watch something else, or something better. If you like it, uh, then uh, just uh, bear with me here. I also would like to thank uh, a couple of people that uh, I had opportunity to discuss with on the trail. And these guys were just uh, amazing. And uh, so I think uh, they deserve also a shout out and a thank you. And um, so this is something that I would like to do for them. And also to many of them, I promised that there would be a video of the different stages. So now I feel compelled to publish them. I also think that the Stevenson being such an exceptional trail, really deserves more people visiting it. So for many hours, sometimes I would be walking and I would not meet just anybody. And uh, there's a place, I think, uh, for also lots of other people from other European countries who might go maybe to the more, quote unquote, spectacular, well-known uh, trails such as the uh, GR5, which uh, starts just on the other side of the Lake Geneva, or who might go to Corsica, walk the GR20. So I think it's a completely legitimate uh, trail that belongs to the European quote-unquote uh, long-distance trails, as uh, you might have others. And so I hope that by making your mouth wet, by publishing then these videos, you're going to be more to enjoy than this absolutely amazing trail. So why is the Stevenson a special trail? Well, because you could call it a uh, a poetic trail. In a certain way, it is also the first uh, real outdoor uh, story that has ever existed, I think. And so you have had people who went out on trails for hunting, for jobs, for working, but uh, you have actually had uh, somebody called Robert Louis Stevenson who hiked uh, this trail for the sake of uh, hiking it, you know, exactly like you would have a Jean-Jacques Rousseau wandering in the nature you would have him deciding to go into nature, to sleep in the nature, to be in contact with the nature and not being scared of uh, whatever might happen to him. So he didn't get uh, swollen by wolves. He um, had uh, adventures with his donkey, but uh, nothing special beyond this. And that's the way normally hiking. So he was born in Scotland. He was a traveler. He was a writer. He had a training also as a lawyer, but he never practiced actually law. And he's most famous for having written books such as the Treasure Island book or the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And uh, at some point in his life, um, around uh, 1878, he'd had his heart broken because the woman that he loved, namely a certain Fanny van de Grift uh, Osborne, an American lady um, who was about to divorce, and he fell in love with her, but... Um, uh, there were some complications because she had to settle her things and so he was alone while she was back in America and uh, setting then things. And so the, only, the best thing that came to his mind then was to travel 
And where would you go? You would go to a place which are going to be then the Seven. And out of this, uh, he created uh, a book which is called uh, Travels with a Donkey in the Seven. And uh, the donkey actually was a girl with the name Modestine, and she was really capricious, had a complicated uh, character. And I think Stevenson never really got hand on her. And so the entire book is about, uh, you know, struggling with a donkey. And then suddenly he sits uh, on the uh, coach and he goes then from um, saint jean du gard goes to Alès, and uh, suddenly he remembers then the donkey and he just starts crying and he remembers this donkey having nice uh, mouse gray uh, fur and uh, having been after all such a wonderful companion. And so, it, uh, as I mentioned, is the book uh, that uh, for the first time really described outdoor living. And his uh, trail started in uh, Monastir, which is now known as Monastir sur Gazeille. It lasted 12 days from relatively late on, from September 22nd to October the 3rd, 1878, 12 days. And uh, the first part, uh, namely that we would do today from um, Le Puy en Velay to Monastir, this is something that he also did uh, by stagecoach. And so uh, he had uh, a backpack uh, that was constructed especially for him. And his uh, view of backpacking were very primitive because he had is essentially almost a bee, an ox uh, that he trailed with him. It was very heavy. And so this is why he needed a donkey. So the backpack alone would not have been done. So where is the Stevenson trail actually located? Well, at this stage, maybe the best is uh, to go to Google Maps. So in the meantime, I have uh, loaded here um, Google My Maps. Um, and uh, this is, of course, the map of uh, France. Uh, the trail is located, as you can see here, in the more southern part uh, of uh, France. Um, here in the back, you're going to have Paris. Uh, and uh, so it's relatively lo located southward. The uh, trail starts here in Le Puy en Velem, goes then to Le Monastir sur Gazé, where Stevenson actually started the trail. Then it goes uh, to uh, Le Boucher Saint Nicolas, down here to Landos, uh, via Pradel it reaches Langogne. Then here it goes to Chédard l'Evêque uh, and uh, La Vérune. Uh, it goes eventually to uh, La Bastide de Pilorum, La Bastide Pilorum. From La Bastide Puron, it goes uh, to Chasserades, um, and at Chasserades, uh, this is really where things uh, get serious, uh, because uh, you're going to then have to climb the Mont Lozère, um, which is actually after this place here, after Le Blémar. Um. So this is uh, the uh, uh, summit of Mont Lozère. Um. Then it continues, uh, and uh, you have here Le Pont de Montvert. Um. From where on you're going to go into the Cévennes, the Cévennes, where here the biggest town in the Cévennes is Florac that you cross, which leads then to the old station of Cassagnas. It continues then to Saint Germain de Calbert, which is an absolutely beautiful place, also visited at some point by Pope Urban. Then you go down eventually to Saint Jean du Gard, where I stopped the trail, where Stevenson trapped the Dale trail. And where many, many other people actually also stopped the trail. The last part of the trail between saint jean du gard and Alès does not have the best publicity. So this is essentially what I'm going to be talking about, the trail that goes here from Le puy en valais down to um, uh, saint jean du gard And if ever you would like to continue, then just do so. So the Stevenson Trail, it uh, crosses various regions. There's the Velem, Le Givaudan, on a GitHub depository, I have put a list of all the different stages with the different cumulative distances and also my gear list. And so if you would like to make this trail, you can then look at how many miles or kilometers you would be able to walk every day. And it can be 20 or 30. And then you can find towns and based then on the towns, then you can actually uh, then uh, settle down and um, get a hotel room or um, go to some gîte or also just uh, you know 
bivouac out in the nature. Now some acknowledgments. So, well, in terms of uh, first you have uh, institutions. In institutions, these are the people who maintain the trail. You got the Fédération Française de Randonnée Pédestre, and these guys actually also have a topo guide, a topo guide, which is a booklet um, that uh, you should absolutely get. Uh, well, because it's uh, containing useful information, and uh, also if you purchase this uh, booklet, uh, it means that uh, they are going to get some money, and uh, they also publish then this uh, map here which frankly, I looked at it maybe two or three times on the trail. But um, if you purchase it, it's good for them. So you can also make a donation if you want. I think this is also possible. I would also like to thank then those who have posted the GPX coordinates, so the trails um, on the internet. There are very various places where you can find them. I have mentioned here one, which is the, uh, the first one, the... Um, this one here. So this here is the uh, site where I actually got the GPX coordinates. And then you have other websites containing lots and lots of information about places where you can stay, the distances, and whatever. There are also some people I would like to mention that I have met on the trail. Uh, on the first day, I have met a young 22-year-old gold uh, somewhere who just got his uh, degree uh, from uh, McGill and who is going to continue now with a career in computer engineering. So I hope you finished the trail and I really enjoyed talking to you for these few hours that I saw you. Um, then a special thanks goes to Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan and Antoine, who's going to follow next. I really had to slow down because they are just in an amazing uh, shape. And I would met uh, then again, uh, meet again Jonathan for many, many stages where we would just exchange information. We would also communicate then on difficulties on the trail. And Jonathan has lots of uh, fantastic culinary projects, which I, so I hope are going to go through. So again, thanks for having slowed down. I hope I'm going to meet you again. It was really a pleasure. There was also Antoine. So Antoine is uh, Mr. Speedy Gonzalez. He races through the entire trail because he didn't have lots of time. 40 kilometers and more uh, distance hikes uh, per day up and down, absolutely tireless, so extremely nice. And after he had finished then the trail, he gave me lots of good advice. So again, thanks Antoine. It was so wonderful to have met you. I hope you're going to enjoy the videos and I uh, hope I, I'm going to one day uh, see you again. And uh, if you're really tired, then you maybe slide down and uh, we might actually walk then together. There were lots of others I have met on the trail in short the time, like Marie-Christine or Monique. Monique, I hope you made the trail if you ever you see these videos. And the, the people in general, I would like to say, in these regions are more than friendly. They are super friendly. And for instance, there is the owner of the uh, camping in, called La Barrette in Finiels, which is a small town. And um, she was extremely useful in terms of giving me indications, and so she would look up and down at me and say, okay, tomorrow's uh, leg is really very, very long. So maybe you should, uh, you know, uh, walk here and there so that it's a little bit easier for you. And eventually I followed her advice and it was just amazing. And uh, you could uh, imagine that somehow it's late now, the sun starts setting, you're walking in the town and suddenly you have a car stopping next to you and the people ask you, well, can we actually help you? Can we get you somewhere? And so they are really helpful. Also, if you need water, water, you don't find them in all the towns. And there was at some point then a um, place. I was really low in terms of water. I thought there would be water supply. There was none. And I crossed a lady in the street um, and I asked her if she knew where the fountain, water fountain was, and there was none. So she just took my water bottles, filled them up, and I could hike on. And so they don't, uh, you know, argue, they don't want anything. They are just friendly and very, very nice people. There are also some other people that I would like to thank. Uh, um, as I mentioned, it has been a very special year. And um, watching your videos on YouTube uh, really kept my spirits high. And so there's a long list. I'm going to go through all these names very shortly. There's even from Ivan Schaeffer, uh, 
I'm not there yet uh, walking in sandals. I have now a tarp, but uh, it's going to take a little while before I'm there. There's Dixie, Dixie uh, uh, from Homemade Wanderlust. Uh, thanks for all these amazing videos you make. Uh, there's John Z. I hope you're going to post again your videos one day. Jupiter Hikes, who makes me laugh so much. Andrew Skirker with his uh, recommendations and advice. Um, and I really loved the video with the bear in Alaska. Then you have uh, semi-professionals who make absolutely amazing outdoor videos. Syntax 77, Craig Adams. Uh, and then there have those who walk for the fun of walking, baskets and uh, garden state. Uh, there's uh, Juliana Chance. I really appreciate it following you in the PCT and the AT. Uh, there's Nightcrawler. My God, you're a number. I really like you. One day I hope I'm going to meet you. There's also Google uh, from Santa Beyond. Uh, I really appreciate the way that you make your videos. Um, and uh, there are three women that are just, uh, I think, more or less my age, and who just uh, walk like crazy. And I would like to give also a shout out to you, to Christy, Annette, uh, the uh, pesky girl, and Lynn. You're amazing. You're just uh, wonderful. On the European side, uh, you also have some people who do some hiking. And uh, I found in particular the website by Mike from MCQ Bushcraft and Wilderness Life enjoyable. And on the French side, uh, you have uh, Grandeur Nature, who I think uh, lives close to here. There's Xavier, who comes from my region, who has absolutely amazing videos of uh, trails that he makes in the region, which are out of reach for me, but they're just uh, beautiful. There's on the French side, then Trekker Compulsif, who have also walked the Stevenson Trail. It made me laugh a lot. And uh, concerning big European trails, you also have the German guy Alex uh, der Wanderbosch, who comes actually from Bavaria. So I enjoyed all of uh, your videos. And please keep on making them. And you made my life much better during the last couple of months. So time has now come to turn to the Stevenson Trail. And there are two slides with elements uh, of things you should know. Um, first of all, that what I call the Stevenson Trail, which goes for me uh, from Le puy en velay down to saint jean du gard is incorporated into the GR7. So GR stands for Grande Randonnée. Grande Randonnée means something like uh, adventures or big trails in French. And they have numbers, and uh, you can find then the entire list of all these website of the all these trails on the website. Um, and uh, the GR70, the entire distance is 272 kilometers, which makes 169 miles. Um, what I call the Stevenson Trail, as I mentioned, is shorter. It's 248 miles kilometers, which corresponds to about 154 miles. So it's not an American type of long distance through hike. But it's considered a European through hike, and uh, you go out uh, and it goes from A to B. It's not in a circle, and um, I think it's actually much nicer to walk like this from A to B than in a circle. In my opinion, and uh, please don't sue me if you uh, disagree with this, uh, I think for anybody in relatively good shape, the trail is accessible. I was completely overweight uh, when I started the trail, and in 10 days I lost maybe 10 kilograms. And uh, all the hills, if you go slowly, you can make them. So it requires preparation, it requires good material, you need to know what you do, but then it's absolutely accessible. For your information, they're going to be have a relatively long uh, stages, long, long, long power parts. Uh, like 28 kilometers then, and where you're going to have also to climb relatively high distances, for instance, 600 meters up and then 800 meters down. So it is not uh, the kind of walk to the supermarket that you would do. It is going to be involving some ex ex some exercise, it's somehow strenuous. It requires a little bit of organization. But as I mentioned, to the best of my knowledge, anybody with a relatively good health can do this. Stevenson Trail elements to know. There is also, in terms of how you do the trail, different ways of doing so. The most, so for inf your information, in France you have a distinction between hotels on one side, camping places, of course, but you can have public camping places and private ones. The private ones, they might have swimming pools. The public, uh, private, the public camping sites, 
They're amazing places. You go there, you're going to find uh, toilets. You're going to find shower with boiling water. You're going to find places where you can do, you know, wash your stuff um, extremely clean. And uh, then you just camp on a field. You pay a nominal fee of some five to seven dollars, five to seven euros, and then you're done. In between these hotels and then camping, you're going to have a wide variety of different places. You're going to have what is called the gîte. The gîte is like a country house and it can have individual rooms. It can also have dorms. Then you're going to have chambre d'hôte, which correspond more to bed and breakfast, where you're going to have individual rooms. So for the gîte in particular, and gîte d'étape, gîte, I was very confused. And probably the best is, if you're in doubt, call them and ask what exactly is the type of format of uh, JIT that they provide. JIT meaning, you know, uh, shelter. And uh, this year, with the COVID, you're going to have then normally one room per individual. But I was also told that you had a larger, um, to the community belonging JIT with dormitories. And instead of putting then 12 people, they would put uh, like uh, four people to keep the social distance. So you need to call, get information, and uh, find out what is best for you. Of course, you can also then rent a, a service for you who, for where they're going to then ship your luggage from one place to the other, if you would like. There's also the notion of BWAC, which I did a couple of times. BWAC essentially means that uh, you do cowboy camping or stats camping, as it's called in the US. The rules here is that uh, the um, tent must be so small that you can't stand with it in, in it. Um, if it's uh, like a tarp, this would be perfect. If it's going to be one of our, you know, long distance hiking tents, it's also okay. Um, it can be put up in the evening, but not before seven in the evening. And it must be gone by nine o'clock the next day in the morning. It shouldn't be more than 50 meters, 50 yards away from the trail and only for one night. If you ever see that you're going to have a barbed wire fences, in that case, don't jump over them. Don't go underneath them. These are private properties. And I think uh, you should respect very carefully this property, even though the people are extremely nice. So there is hunting going on and you don't want to be shot uh, in the hunting season because they uh, confuse you with some boar. Fire is also a delicate issue. Uh, I met some people who all the time were making fires. I didn't make any fire. I have my regular little burnum. The woods can be extremely dry. You can set a fire in the woods. Be extremely careful. And uh, you are going to go to places where you actually can see that others have camped before. The, where you're going to have then a circle where people have then made fire. And I guess in those places, it's absolutely okay to make fire, but just be very careful in terms of what you're doing. Again, this is to the best of my knowledge, uh, state of the art uh, 2020. If uh, you have any doubt, uh, go to the mairie, give a phone call to the local uh, Lord Mayor, the mayor's house, and get information just to make sure that you don't do anything wrong or ask the farmers if uh, it's okay what you're going to be doing. I'm even sure that uh, if you're late in the night, uh, a little bit desperate and you ask a farmer, the farmer is actually going to tell you a place on his or her field where you might uh, then uh, be able to camp. So the uh, last slide here is going to tell you what is going to then be the uh, way that I'm going to do the different uh, stages, the different videos. I'm going to start each of my um, videos of the trail by having a fly or flyover with uh, Google Earth so that you see how it exactly looks in terms of geography. And then I'm going to put uh, my own videos and pictures of me huffing and puffing. And uh, if you like the videos, please don't hesitate to give me a thumb up. And uh, also you might subscri subscribe, subscribe. I plan to do other hiking videos on my gear. And as I go on hiking now, um, I think uh, I'm going to post uh, more, um, more videos if there's some interest. So let's start now with uh, the Puy-en-Velay for our first stage.